In the summer of 2003, the lights went out for 55 million Americans across the Northeast. Panic spread throughout New York State, injuring hundreds. 11 people died in the dark. What was to blame? A small vulnerability inside the state's transmission control room. Raymond Kenny, a disgruntled employee, unleashed a virus and walked away. Four hours later, the system overloaded and the grid shut down. Ten years on, modern systems have advanced exponentially. 2011 marked the installation of America's first central operating system. CTOS is a computer software that manages entire cities, providing centralized control over subway lines, traffic lights, surveillance cameras, and electricity grids. A computer now controls a major city, but who controls the computer? The answer is private companies that have everything to gain from a CTOS. Personal data collection is the key commodity. You are no longer an individual. You are a data cluster bound to a vast global network. Last year, the average American cast a digital shadow of over 2.3 gigabytes. What does that represent? Of course, there are credit cards, medical records, and reading habits, but a CTOS includes much more. Massive data silos track and sort every moment of your digital life, revealing how you think and what you believe. That information could be turned against you, not just to sell products, but to influence your world views. CTOS directly links your personal information to the physical systems you use every day, essentially providing a direct line to your bedroom laptop. Because all data is interconnected, from Nigerian email scams to hardcore pornography, online shopping to emergency services, it's all part of the same network. Ten years ago, one man shut down the entire Northeast from a central control room. Today, everything can be hacked. No one knows what part of the system will be exploited, but everyone agrees the next assault will do more than just turn out the lights. Hi, this is Jonathan Morin, creative director on Watch Dogs. Watchdog's hyper-connected world will redefine what you think about open-world game. But the very first time, not only you'll be able to explore the city at will, but you'll be able to tap into the privacy of everybody and control everything around you. Today, we want to give you a little taste of what it's like. Everything you're about to see is just another day in the city. There is no mission and no objectives. In Watch Dogs, when you use the profiler, you can invade the privacy of everybody around you. If someone has a secret, you're gonna find it. All the information you're gonna get will be useful to progress in the game. In this case, accessing a bank account. If you think you're alone, think again. You're not. There's always somebody out there. Other people are trying to use the CTOS for their own interest. You will never know where the profiler can lead you. In Watch Dogs, you're creating your own experience by tapping into people's lives. What's cool about it? is that the possibilities are endless and the gameplay extremely unexpected. I want to talk to you. I'll call the police. I swear I will. I'm not going to let you get away with it. Don't touch me. I'm warning you. You don't get to ignore me. Let me go. And you think you're so special, huh? <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> Leave me alone! 911, please state your emergency. Please, you have to get the cops out here. This man just pulled out a gun and started shooting. Hurry! Hey, Harris, can't authorize. Initial advance search for suspect now. 
You're gonna control the entire city of Chicago, and even the smallest thing will become a weapon. When situations get out of hand, you would be surprised of how many options you have. I hope you've enjoyed the demo. Keep following us to be the first to know about what's going on on Watch Dogs. CTOS threat monitoring report number 193A. Subject, Aiden Pierce. On October 26, 2012, at 1630 Central Time, CTOS network security detected multiple breaches in our system. This was a level three network intrusion. On-site surveillance cameras and first-hand eyewitness confirm Aiden Pierce at the site of the intrusion. We now have solid confirmation that Pierce can breach the CTOS populace database at will. This grants him access to names, salaries, occupations, and countless clusters of private information. Attempts to track and block his access points have proven unsuccessful. The illegal hacks used by Pierce give him access to secure banking accounts, in this case, he uses private account information to withdraw stolen funds from a nearby ATM. Moments later, we detected a new intrusion from an unknown party. It appears we are not the only people tracking and monitoring peers. Make note of this as we'll come back to it later. Starting at 1632 Central Time, a series of escalating events. Pierce accesses data on Sandy Higgins, a teacher with a restraining order against her ex-husband, Bobby Sawicki. The CTOS crime prevention system flags Higgins as a potential victim. Upon receiving the CTOS notification of an imminent crime, Pierce decides to follow Miss Higgins. This course of action was noted by a criminologist and will be added to his upcoming oh, psych report. I swear I will. I'm not gonna let you get away with it. Don't touch me, I'm warning you. Here we see Pierce intervene, saving Higgins. <gasps> When the attacker Fuck flees, off. the CTOS crime prevention system prompts Pierce to capture her attacker. It should be noted that this indicator is part of a beta system intended for Chicago PD. We don't know how Pierce gained access to this, but it's clear this breach goes far deeper than we ever imagined. Next is a hack we were completely unaware of. Pierce somehow overloads an electrical fuse box. The implications of this are obvious, but what happens next is even worse. Chicago PD responds to the disturbance, but Pierce eludes the officers by using our system against them. When a CTOS hack isn't immediately available, Pierce does not hesitate to use more conventional tools. Our image recognition systems confirm that Pierce is armed with a nine millimeter handgun. The lesson is do not mistake Pierce for just another hacker. He's something more. Despite Chicago PD's considerable show of force against Pierce, he managed to escape the area by disrupting the CTOS transit system. One of our top priorities should be to find the exploit he used and close it off. As Pierce makes his escape, we again see clear evidence that an unknown party was monitoring his actions. We must track down this individual and determine if he or she is trying to stop him, or worse, help him. We must protect our system, and that means containing Aiden Pierce. Any breach of CTOS is a danger to everyone. 
welcome to the first installment of the Watch Dogs gameplay series, where we will give you an exclusive first look at some of the innovative gameplay features that make Watch Dogs truly revolutionary. In part one, you'll learn more about how Watch Dogs is redefining hacking and to use it to turn the city into your ultimate weapon. Everyone and everything is connected by technology. Hacking into that connection can be very powerful. All these connections are controlled by CTOS, a citywide centralized software created to cut costs and maximize efficiency. It manages transportation control, emergency response, utilities, crime monitoring, and much more. Since Chicago implemented CTOS, people get to work faster, the crime rate has dropped, and communication networks are more stable and more accessible than ever before. With everything now connected, someone with the skills to take over this system, someone like Aiden Pierce, can become extremely powerful. CTOS access must be unlocked district by district by installing a backdoor virus into each of its territorial control centers. Reach them all as you need to and extend your reach across all of Chicago. Everything connected to the network can be hacked from a smartphone. With the push of a button, the city will become your weapon. This is powerful. Just don't be stupid. You screw around and you get people hurt. CTOS access lets you hack anybody's personal data, break into their house through their own home security cameras, intercept texts and phone calls. Yeah, no source. Fuck that. Tell him we go to court and his breakdowns go in public. Steal their passwords, access their computer, and even their bank accounts. The data you steal will further increase your hacking skills. You can also access the Chicago PD's crime prediction system. It uses the vast surveillance camera network and each citizen's personal data to predict potential criminal activities. When the system alerts you of a crime, it's your choice whether you want to intervene or turn a blind eye. Tag and track your enemies through security cameras. Create diversions to lure them away or directly into a deadly trap. Use your environment to create dynamic cover before entering to ensure your escape. The possibilities are endless. When the heat turns up, CTOS has many ways to help you get away clean. Cause accidents, trigger road blockers, overload steam pipes. Raise bridges. And short out electronics at your whim. Anyone in the city may be an active threat. Never let your guard down. Take advantage of focus mode. It represents Aiden's quick reflexes and analysis capabilities so he can combine multiple abilities in a pinch. When the police come after you, jam their communications and cameras to evade them or hack into hiding places to get away. You can even use the L train to escape. If all else fails, you can cause a massive blackout and disappear into the shadows. The entire city is in your hands. In part two, we'll share more about the most surveyed city in the United States, Chicago, Illinois. Hello everyone, I'm Colin Graham. I'm the animation director on Watch Dogs, and today I'm excited to present to you a vertical slice of the Watch Dogs free roaming experience. So actually, this is not a mission. Everything we're gonna showcase today is completely systemic, and we're free to do as we please. 
We start off in the wards, the low-income district of our interpretation of Chicago. When creating the world of watchdogs, we wanted to stay true to the city and give a unique flavor to each and every neighborhood, not only in terms of the architecture, but also in terms of the people that you'll encounter and what is happening in their day-to-day -day lives. In the wards, you'll see working class citizens, rusty cars, gang members, abandoned houses, and low grade pawn shops. It's really not the kind of place that you're gonna to wanna to be alone after dark. Nowadays, modern cities are increasingly managed by software, controlling traffic lights, electricity grids, and surveillance systems. In our version of Chicago, this management software is called CTOS, or the Central Operating System. The CTOS controls everything in the city, and it was created by the Bloom Corporation. Since the CTOS has been installed in Chicago, people get to work faster, the crime rate is dropped, and the communication networks are now more accessible and stable than they ever were before. It goes without saying that if everything is connected, somebody able to take over the system would be extremely powerful. At this point in the game, we don't have control over this district CTOS system. The icons that you see over people's head mean that we cannot hack into their mobile devices at the moment. We need to find the CTOS control center, install a backdoor virus into the system to take control over all of the infrastructure in this district. There it is, the CTOS control center. It's heavily guarded. Let's see if we can find the server access codes from a distance. With cameras, we can explore restricted areas without being spotted, tag different guards, and access details on their lives. It seems that Bloom employees all have a sort of shady past. There it is, the access code to the server room. Unfortunately, we can't access the server via the cameras. We need to sneak inside. One thing that was really important to us when we designed Watch Dogs was to fully support different player styles. Every situation in the game can be tackled the way the player sees fit. In this situation, we can go all out guns blazing, completely stealth without the guards ever seeing us, or we can hack from a distance without ever setting foot inside the restricted area. Let's hack this forklift. Aiden can use the environment to distract and lure guards. Pretty much anything you hack has multiple functions. So for example, you could use this forklift to access the roof, or you could use it to create cover. <laughs> Hacking in Watch Dogs is all about player expression. Let's set an improvised explosive device so we can hack it a little bit later. You'll also notice Aiden's low profile stance. This indicates when the guards are unaware of our presence. We'll try to reach the upper level of the building to see if we can gain a vantage point over our opponents. Everything in the environment can be hacked, so we're gonna make some dynamic cover. We'll use this forklift to lure the guard towards our IED that we set earlier. Let's see how this plan unfolds. What you just saw is called focus. It represents Aiden's analysis capabilities and his quick reflexes. This gives the player more time to combine core game mechanics together, such as shooting, hacking, and driving, in order to handle more complicated situations. Now we can access that control room. Now we'll be able to hack all of the devices connected to the CTOS within the districts. Thousands of cameras, traffic lights, the electricity grid, and most importantly, all of the citizen information profiles. We can also benefit from the Chicago Police Department Crime Prediction System, which uses facial and pattern recognition to spot potential criminals or potential victims. Since this is a pretty rough neighborhood, I'm pretty sure we're gonna stumble on some suspected criminal activity pretty soon. And there it is. The system just pushed an alert of a potential crime. 
we can see the system trying to triangulate the location on our minimap. Take note, this isn't a mission. This can happen anywhere at any time. We've just spotted a potential victim. It's always up to the player if he wants to investigate or not, to take action or not. So let's see how this turns out. You think you're leaving me, huh? Jesus, I told you to stay away from you me! You belong to me now, get it? You better leave or I'll call the cops! I'll fucking kill you, goddammit! Yo! That was close. Good thing that we intervened. We managed to prevent the crime, but we triggered a chase. From here, the criminal's behavior is unpredictable. He can try to get away, shoot back at us, surrender, or call for backup. It seems like he decided to get away by car. Let's chase him down. In Watch Dogs, we have a wide variety of vehicles. Each one of them has their own unique properties and handling. Let's see how we can use the CTOS to our advantage to neutralize this criminal and leave the cops to deal with him later. The chase stops right here. Using the blockers usually reserved for the cops during interventions, we manage to stop this criminal without killing him. This gives us a reputation bonus. This system is at the core of the Watch Dogs experience. Depending on how we handle different situations in the game, the media and the citizens will have a different perception of our hero, whether he is a true vigilante or a reckless criminal. This will have repercussions throughout the game. Now, let's head for the Loop, the historical district of Chicago, where you're gonna find the most iconic buildings in the city. We're gonna go to a gun shop to see what arsenal is available for players. The economy is a big part of Watch Dogs. Players will be able to grow their arsenal with weapons and craft their tools in order to increase their power and their hacking abilities. You will find all of the weapons that you would expect in a traditional shooter. Pistols, assault rifles, guns, sniper rifles, and grenade launchers, just to name a few. A lot of bullets were fired in our last encounter with the CTOS guards. Let's stock up on some more ammo. Finding everything. As we mentioned earlier, the media keep track of your actions and the citizens are gonna react according to the perception that they have of you. Here, the media is reporting a crime in which you are the number one suspect. The gun shop owner recognized you and decided to trigger a silent alarm to notify the police. Copy that, possible one suspect presumed armed and dangerous. Police are now trying to locate the source of the threat using the surveillance system in the city, represented by the yellow circles on the mini map. Aiden is able to stall their efforts by hacking into their communication systems while avoiding the scanning areas. PH units, do you copy? Repeat, squad to all PH units. Once they've lost our trail, we can go back to our activities. One thing that Bloom did to win over the population of Chicago with the CTOS project was to install free Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the city. Free Wi-Fi is cool, but not very safe with someone like Aiden Pierce around. Hacking into this box is gonna give us access to every device that's connected to it. So let's see where that brings us.
We just hacked into the webcam of a laptop. It seems that we're in the apartment of a mother and we can hear her baby crying in the background. Her bank information is in her mobile phone sitting right there on the table in front of us. It's totally up to the player whether we decide to steal it or not. Of course, this won't affect our reputation because nobody can witness this action. Just like in real life, nothing is totally black or white, but rather many shades of gray. This is exactly the situation where we want the player to question his own morality. Let's go withdraw that money. If you think that you're alone, think again. Aiden is not the only hacker in town. Someone's trying to install a backdoor virus on Aiden's phone in order to steal a portion of the information that he's gathered through the game so far. First, we're gonna have to reach the area where the signal is coming from. Using our profiler, we're going to try to identify the hacker before the installation finishes. There he is. In Watch Dogs, things aren't always what they seem to be. This is actually another player that seamlessly came into our single player experience. Let's not let him get away with this. We're gonna teach this guy a lesson. We stopped the hack, but the hacker managed to get away. I don't know about you, but we can't let this pass by. We need to retaliate. Using the grid, let's see if we can find that second player. There he is. Let's enter his game seamlessly. The second player is not yet aware of our presence. If we act carefully, he might think that we're one of the many NPCs in the city. So let's find a place to hide and start hacking. What's going on? The second player has just been alerted that a breach has occurred on his phone. He's trying to find us using his profiler. He's dangerously close. Let's hide in the car. We're spotted. Let's get out of there. Let's set up an ambush right here. By dragging the other player back here into the alley, we make sure that no civilians get hurt during the firefight. We didn't succeed in hacking the second player, but we did get a little bit of revenge. So that's what we have time for today. We hope you enjoyed our quick gameplay session. Stay tuned for more about Watch Dogs.